gentlemen, please welcome Director of Product Management for Canvas, Brian Gates. Well, good afternoon, everyone. Everybody get a good lunch? Geared up, ready for the last few hours of Structure Con here? All right. So to, before I get into presentation here, I'd like to take a few minutes here and kind of introduce myself, explain why I'm here, and more importantly, talk to you about where Canvas is and where we're going. So this wonderful group of people here is my family. Uh, my wonderful wife, Sarah, and my two amazing kids, Brighton and Aspen. And as a parent, my, my kids are getting to the age where they're starting to enter the education system. And so it's amazing to see them develop, and that's incredibly important to me to really have a bright future for them. And as a designer and an innovator, that's, I get my satisfaction from seeing people use products that really better their lives. And when the opportunity came to work at Instructure, I couldn't think of a better alignment to what I hold dear and what satisfies me as a person. And so to build a product and lead a team of really talented designers and engineers and product managers to build out a successful product for you, it really, really hits at the core of who I am. And so I want to take a step back here and look back at what we've done in the last year. So 1,200. That's the number of bugs, usability fails, uh, opportunities to remove the rough edges in our product we've shipped this year to make a better experience for you and to help evolve our product down a more user experience path. The next number I'd like to talk about are 200. That's the number of significant enhancements we've introduced in the product throughout this last year. Some of those you might have played with are our quiz statistics or our new files. These are innovations in the product that help extend the daily workflows and the user experience for you. And we managed to do all this while delivering a 99.99% uptime. And that's a big number. That, that is, thank you, thank you. That's a big number. That's, that literally is best of breed in technology, in SaaS companies, cloud-based companies. And we're right there. And that really goes to the core of who we are. Now, in addition to these great stats, we've also introduced some great new products. Uh, you may have heard yesterday our Canvas Commons product. How many are you excited about that one? All right. And we also introduced some great mobile products. We have teacher tools there uh, for Android. We have Magic Marker, and we have SpeedGrader. How many SpeedGrader users? All right. Awesome. So those are great products that help extend our portfolio and extend the reach of our, our products to meet your unique needs as your institutions grow and you use more of the product. I want to take a second here and really look at kind of the core and the vision of Canvas. Yeah, I love my Panda Vision goggles. Good image. Yeah. Uh, what, what's at our core? What are the three principles that really drive our product teams? And those can be summed up into three words. Adaptability, adoptability, and reliability. Those are the three things that make Canvas what it is. So in terms of adaptability, we've been open source from the very beginning. We leverage APIs, we leverage LTI. We find ways to help allow you to extend the product, to let it bend and mold to deliver the unique needs of your institution. And then in terms of adoptability, we've been extremely focused on the user experience. We want everybody to benefit from the LMS, and we see that. Canvas has incredibly high usage, not only in terms of who's leveraging the product, but how deeply they leverage the product. And all this would be for naught if we're not reliable. So how, how do we maintain this moving forward? When software companies grow and grow at the rate that we do, your user base starts to look like this. This is a good representation here. So if you take your product ecosystem and you break down your users, you have on the far left here your power users, uh, those that are going to really kind of stretch the application, uh, build upon it, and say leverage it in unique ways. Then on the other side here, you have uh, your users that need more hand-holding, that need a little more guidance in the application, that are looking to adopt technology in their lives. Now, that middle column there is who we really focus on. That's your average user. 
And that's really the 80% of your user base. And when companies get big, the groups on the end there become very loud. And if you're not focused on that middle 80%, you can tend to really, I say, uh, hurt your user experience by adding features either that solve for a variety of edge cases that really messy up the interface, or you put too many restrictions in the product to try to accommodate for those on the end. And so in terms of how we allocate our resources, we put the lion's share of our effort towards that middle 80%, our average users that are getting value from the product each and every day. And that's how we maintain our amazing growth for all of our users, as well as maintain that great user experience moving forward. So in terms of what you can expect to see from us in this year and rolling into next year, it can be broken down into these six buckets. And I'll spend some time here going in each one of those on what you can expect to see. So the first thing I'd like to look at is core quality. Now, as a customer-focused company, and especially a customer-focused product team, we love going out on site, observing how you use Canvas, learning from you, and building that back into the product. And one of these opportunities we had to go out and talk to some instructors, the great statement came back from them, you know, I love all the new innovations you put into the product, but can you make the ones you have today work better? And that, that really struck a chord. And that, that's where the core quality initiative comes in. The, the daily workflows that you engage in, uh, the rough edges and the friction you might encounter, how do we smooth those out? How do we get them out of the application? How do we make a better experience for you on that daily usage? And one of the ways we're doing that uh, was with our new UI. Look good? Yeah? Now, Jared introduced this yesterday, but I'd like to spend a little bit more time on how, how we got here. Why, why this? I think everybody looks at user interfaces and says, OK, well, it looks pretty. And you have some nice colors, and it, you know, it's got some nice icons on it. But there's actually a lot of science that has gone in behind this and why we have this UI. We've done a fair amount of user testing, learning from our users throughout the years on how they navigate through the application and what information is valuable to them. And one of the ways we can help measure this is through a usability scale called SUS, or System Usability Scale. And so we took our old UI, our old navigation there, and we tested it with users and non-users, both. And they gave us back a score. Now, the scale for that score is on a 0 to 100. It's graded on a curve. You guys know about curves, right? Uh, so if you take that, we got to end up with our old UI of score of around 65, which is about a C plus, which is good. But we're aiming for the best of breed here. And so this new UI, we're happy to say, tested out an 84.5, which is an A+. That's best of read user experience there. Thank you. And that's part of the science that goes in behind what may look like a, a, a nice, colorful transformation. There is a lot of intentionality in why we build things the way we build it, and that's based on you. And it's a, our partnership with our customers in terms of helping to grow and advance our product. The next item I'd like to talk about is gradebook performance. How many of our larger classes, larger institutions in here? Yep. Any experience issues with gradebook? A little bit. So gradebook performance, it, we're really tackling this in a, in a multitude of ways. Uh, one in terms of how our gradebook is architected, and the other in terms of, again, user experience and how you interact with it. And this is something we're going on right now, and we'll have gradebook performance uh, enhancements shipped here by false start. So when you roll into the next calendar, you're, you're going to expect to see a much snappier gradebook that is much more responsive, and the underpinnings of which scale to meet the needs of our large classes. The next item here is accessibility. And I'm happy to announce that we've recently been certified by WebAIM as accessible. So kudos for us there. Thank you. And the thing I want to point out about accessibility, well, well, we're happy for the applause there. It, this isn't just certified. Now we can take our eyes off the ball and go move on to other things. Accessibility is something that is being baked into our everyday process. So all new features that we ship from our product have to be fully accessible. And this is very much a journey and not a destination. And I want to give a big shout out to uh, Aaron Cannon and Dana Danger, who have been on our product team and helping to drive not only our team's awareness of accessibility, 
but really our certification elements and bringing that to the forefront of all of our development processes moving forward. Okay. Next item in core quality. How many of you use SpeedGrader? Yes? All right. Now, we love SpeedGrader, and it's a fantastic tool. It's really what differentiated us in the market. And we're only going to make it better. So over at the UX tent, that way, uh, you can go experience some of these new designs. And this is a great stage for us to get your feedback as we're evolving where SpeedGrader goes. And this is a screenshot of one of those designs in terms of how we're, let's say, really advancing the UI. Uh, Christy Rock Cruz, our product manager over this, uh, descri aptly describes kind of the behavior. If you watch someone use SpeedGrader, right, and I'm sure you've all experienced this, you go all the way up to the top left to advance your student, go through your grades, and then go all the way back up. So you get kind of this rainbow pattern uh, in terms of how the cursor advances across the page. So we're, we're killing the rainbow, as we colorfully describe it, in terms of advancing the user experience in SpeedGrader. And so you can come experience some of these designs down our UX tent, and then I also have a uh, presentation shortly after this where we'll go deeper into some of the thought processes around this, and we'd love to get your feedback. Say, what, what areas are we missing, and how can we best improve this? Next theme I'd like to talk about, content simplicity. So I think this picture aptly describes what it's like to manage content. Uh, herding cats, right? So we've announced our product, Canvas Commons. How many of you have been a part of the beta? A few of you? Great. You guys have been active members of that beta. And say in the first six months we've had that open, there's been over 600 content items shared freely to the community. And I think that's what's exciting about Commons is seeing what, as a community, you can do with the tools that we're providing. Not only can you quickly find and import information into your, your courses or your institution, but you can share that across institutions. And there's also a variety of ways to help manage how that sharing goes on. We're really excited to see where uh, Commons helps to extend and simplify com content. The next product I'd like to hit on is Catalog. How many Catalog users? A few? There's a couple. All right. So Catalog is our kind of on the other end of this in terms of helping to drive enrollment for online classes. We're Catalog is something we're advancing on, and if you see Matt Goodwin, he is our product manager uh, over Catalog and is really kind of taking, i say, the delivery of courses to the next level. And we're excited for some of the great advancements that will be coming into this space. The next thing I'd like to talk about are outcomes. Now, this has been part of us since the very beginning. This is part of our foundation. We've had outcomes, i uh, say, in the product. And as we look at the market and look at your growth and your changes that you're undergoing, there's more we can do here. And so this year, we're undertaking really kind of the foundational elements around outcomes to really refine those. And next year, you're going to see a much bigger shift in terms of how our product delivers competency-based education. And that comes through a strong partnership, again, with our customers to help shape and mold what that'll be. And so we're excited to see the foundation getting rounded out this year with the setup for next year where you'll see some greater advancements in terms of how we deliver and meet the needs there at your institutions. International being our, our, our fifth theme here. How many of you are from out of the country? Another show of hands. A few of you. So international is a growth market for us. We, we're now in 36 countries worldwide, and we're seeing greater and greater uh, reach for Canvas outside of domestic uh, situations here. So we're adding some great functionality into the product. Uh, earlier this year, we introduced SCORM. And so that helps, I say, meet some of the needs there. We're working on double-blind grading right now as well, and as well as some offline content capabilities within the product. Both of these things help to support some of the unique needs internationally as well as domestically in an area we're looking to help, again, support the market there as it advances. Next thing I'd like to talk about is K-12. How many K-12 schools? <laughs> oh, good portion. So, so Canvas and an LMS for, has a good broad reach of I say feature sets in it that aren't all too different between higher ed and K-12. There's a lot of similarities there. That being said, 
K-12 does have some very specific needs that we're starting to address. The first one being uh, student information systems, or CISs, and having better integrations there to support the variety of CIS solutions that are out there. And so we're taking a bunch of different approaches to help get out the gate with K-12 schools and provide provisioning and great pass, pass back there. And in terms of some of the other needs and some of the other wins for K-12, an excuse an assignment was a, a heavily requested feature. Yeah. And so this is a screenshot of, of version one of that. This is in beta right now and, and something you can start to play with and it'll be in production here in the next few weeks where to simply excuse an assignment, all you have to do is write EX. Assignment skewed, no longer calculated uh, in, the, in the final grade. And the next iteration of this is adding the ability to tie comments on why that assignment was being skewed. And status is along that. And this comes, again, from listening to our, our different institutions, especially in our K-12 space. We've also done some work with multiple grading periods. And that'll be coming out here shortly as well. It's been behind a beta, and we'll be introducing that here, along with the ability to wait different grading periods. And so that'll all be ready by false start. You got, you got a plot for that. That's a good one. Yeah. There we go. And the last thing I'd like to talk about is data. Now, data is a growing component of our everyday lives. And say so whether it's the thermostat sitting on your wall that's secretly watching you to optimize your air conditioning, or whether it's the wristband you wear on your watch to help drive a healthier uh, lifestyle. Data is a critical component to helping advance your institution, allow you to become a better instructor, allow your students to know more, and we're taking a big leap in that today. I'd like to start with a number we previously weren't able to really pull. 35 million daily page views. Across all of our Canvas instances, that's how many page views we get every single day. That's a significant load there. And this number, really is representative, again, all the way back to our adoptability. We see that high level of usage and that deep level of adoption. You're going to generate say, stats like this. So I'm happy to announce today the unveiling of our new product, Canvas Data. We're, we are really thrilled about this product. Now, what's exciting about Canvas Data is other institutions, when it comes to analytics or it comes to data, they, they'll build out dashboards and canned reports, and they'll provide those to you. And that'll answer some of the questions, but you all have you know, different needs. You want to answer different questions. And that's where Canvas Data is unique. We're actually giving you access to all the information through Canvas Data. So your institution can build on it using Tableau, R, Excel, and answer your own questions. We take all the data within Canvas, all the usage data, and you basically can answer anything you want. Build your own reports, build your own dashboards. And we've also extended out to some of the great partnerships with Civitas and Intellify. Thank you. And I'd also like to uh, turn it over here to Joel Hartman, who is CIO of University of Central Florida. And he'll speak a little bit about some of the great work they've done with Civitas. The University of Central Florida, we're pursuing the use of predictive academic analytics to improve student persistence and completion. As major users of both Canvas and Civitas Learning, we were glad to learn that we can now quickly and securely move Canvas data into the Civitas platform through a direct integration, and we can also download it ourselves for local analysis. By providing our Civitas applications with frequent uploads of Canvas data, we expect to improve the predictive power of the Civitas Inspire application giving our advisors and institutional leaders more powerful and timely predictive insights than were ever possible before. Thank you, Joel. Data, get it? Come on, that's a good one. So we've got a couple more presentations today presented by uh, Linda Fang, and she is our star product manager who's really led in the development of our data product. Uh, sh the first session here, using data for insight, there he is, uh, will be uh, Univer uh, Utah State University, and uh, Utah State University, got it. Uh, we'll be talking about some of the unique dashboards they've built on top of Canvas data and really help drive some of the uh, predictive analytics there. 
And then later on, defying gravity with data is with UCF and Civitas, again, showing about some of the great things they've done. Now, what's kind of harking back to why, why this approach? With all this great data, the learnings that we can get, again, as a community, in terms of how you leverage it, how you use it with your institution, can then be baked back into the product in terms of how we might build alerts. And I've got a, again, I'll give another plug here for a session later on today where we talk about context cards. And this is a way we're looking to boil that data into the everyday workflows for users. So analytics are most actionable when they're there when you need them. And I say, again, if they're buried in within a report, I have to go find that information, answer the question, and then go somewhere else to take action on it. What we're doing with context cards is we're putting that information right where you need it. So a good example of this might be if I'm in the inbox and I'm looking to communicate with a student, let me just hover over that student's name and get a quick snapshot of where they are. And so this helps, again, boil that information up to where I want to take action on it so I can better engage and better connect with my students and have that information right at my fingertips. And so I'll wrap it up here with uh, uh, six main themes this year. Our core quality, data, international, outcomes, our K-12, and content simplicity. These are the areas we're focused on most this year to continue to develop the Canvas platform and meet the needs of your institutions and your students to make a better product for you. With that, uh, I'll be taking some questions just up here on stage. I also highly encourage you to go visit our UX tent. Again, you can go experience some of these new innovations and help guide the development process with us. And then I'll also be, again, down in Silverado 2, uh, talking more deeply about the roadmap, and that'll be a more intimate setting where we can have some greater questions. So thank you today. Thank you.